Hi everyone. Good morning to all of you. How are you all? I hope you are all good. So this is Dr. Kanna from the Department of English, Silver Jubilee Government College. And today we are going to discuss one more lesson from third semester for UG. And the topic is shyness my shield. Okay. Shyness my shield is a wonderful extract taken from Mahatma Gandhi ji's autobiography called My Experiments with Truth. What is shyness? And probably most of you know that because most of the students experience it when the teacher asks you a question, when uh, you talk to some strangers, when you talk to some elders, when you talk to the teachers, and most of us feel shy. And even Gandhi ji is not exempted from it. Gandhi ji also had a lot of shyness to speak in public. I don't need much introduction to the writers of this text because most of us, every Indian knows, not only Indians, the entire world knows about Mahatma Gandhi ji. And uh, he is the father of our nation and uh, he has written a wonderful autobiography of his own, though he wrote in a very simple language. Today, it is a matter for the entire world that he has written My Experiments with Truth. And this is a small extract taken from his autobiography called My Experiments with the Truth. Okay, well, if you see about the writer's introduction, and even though I said that no need, uh, there is no uh, special introduction to the writer, but let me explain you something about Mahatma Gandhiji's life here. And you all know very well that Gandhiji was born on 2nd October 1869, that is in Gujarat. Well, his autobiography tells us that the book is written in five parts now. And if you look at the first part, most of the first part deals with his childhood life, you know, that the way, the place where he was born, the way how he was brought up and uh, the way how he studied, you know. So, all these things will be covered up actually in the first part. Whereas, the second part, uh, probably the moment when he went to London to study his barrister, and uh, where he completed his uh, barrister, so that is a wonderful uh, place where he studied now. But the problem what Gandhiji was trying to tell us actually in this text is a very important thing that is shyness my shield. What is shyness and what is shield here? Because I told you just now that we all know very well what is shyness. So shyness is something that uh, inability to speak in public because we cannot speak in public and we don't have the public speaking skills sometimes, you know. And uh, when we see our relatives, when we see our teachers, when we see some elders, and most of the kids feel shyness to speak in front of them. But Gandhiji was not a kid. Gandhiji was not a kid. But when he faces the people in public, and even if there is a group of three or four people in front of him, and he was unable to speak uh, uh, eloquently in front of them, that is the biggest problem that he had faced uh, in England. Okay, well, coming back to the text now here that I told you now, this small extract was written when Gandhiji was in England, when he was studying barrister, that is law. Okay, let us have a look at the text now that uh, Shyness My Shield, uh, which is written by Mahatma Gandhi uh, in his autobiography, that is My Experiment with the Truth. Oh, I told you just now that this small extract was taking place when Gandhiji was uh, studying or pursuing his barrister in London and where he came across a lot of friends but the problem is that he never spoke out in front of them that is the biggest problem that so throughout the text if you see the text the text is divided into three parts now here one is the first part tells about the vegetarian society and where Gandhiji became an executive member and the second instance, what uh, the writer wants to tell us from this extract is uh, number of times that uh, number of attempts he made to break that silence or uh, to speak in public. So that is the second aspect which I am going to tell you. And the third part is the way how he was successful and the way how he treated this silence the way how he treated this shyness because he uses the beautiful words in the text you know that uh, he sometimes he says uh, it is a constitutional shyness for him and that teaches him 
the economy of words also in his life. My lecture is divided into these three parts now. The first one is about the vegetarian society. The second one is about the number of attempts he made to break this shyness in front of his friends. And the third one, the significance of this shyness in his life, how it helped him to become a complete man or a, a good speaker here. So that is the third part of which it is. And of course, finally, at the end of this class, I'm going to tell you the vocabulary of the difficult words, how Gandhiji had used actually in this text. So that is a very important one. Okay, let me introduce you the characters in this text now that uh, whom Gandhiji had faced uh, when he was in London. And the first one is Oldfield. And uh, this man happened to be a very close friend of Gandhiji whom he always shared uh, with him all the things, you know. But Oldfield was surprised uh, why Gandhiji was silent when he comes out actually to discuss with his friends. That is one, that is Oldfield. And the second one is Mr. Hills. And who is this gentleman? And he is the president of the vegetarian society. And who started this vegetarian society? And he is also known as the proprietor of Iron Thames Works, uh, uh, which is in London. And he is also known as the main financier for this committee. What is the committee? That is a vegetarian society. That is second character. Okay, well, the third character is Dr. Allenson now. And he was an advocate actually. And he was the supporter of this uh, uh, new birth control movement in England. And uh, he was also considered to be anti-Puritan by Mr. Hills. In fact, Mr. Hills was a Puritan. And uh, he considered Dr. Allinson uh, as uh, anti-Puritan in the text now. And these are the major three characters from England whom Gandhiji had faced when he was in London. And there is one more character in the text uh, and whom he travels with him that is uh, Sergeant Majumdar. And he traveled once with him to some place where he uh, again encountered with this problem that is shyness here. So that is the fourth character now. And of course, there is one more character which I want to tell you that is uh, Mr. Howell and who is considered to be a uh, dietitian. And he was the author of The Ethics of Diet. Because Gandhiji was given an opportunity once, you know, uh, to speak something about uh, vegetarianism, to, to promote that vegetarianism uh, among the people. But unfortunately, Gandhiji was failed even in that context also, which we will discuss later. Well, these are the characters I introduced you now. And well, uh, coming back to the text, you know, what happens in the beginning of the text? I told you the first part of the text is about the vegetarian society. And uh, uh, in England or in England or in London, so there is a society called vegetarian society and which was headed by Mr. Hills. And he was the president of the society right from its uh, establishment. And because uh, he has been supporting financially this vegetarian society for several years. So, most of the members who are in vegetarian society were the followers of this uh, Mr. Hill here. So, when Gandhiji was elected as the member of this executive uh, committee, that is a vegetarian society, and he was supposed to participate in all the meetings and where he was supposed to represent the voice of the people, the voice of the other members in the meeting. So that is one aspect. Dr. Field used to tease him sometimes, you know that. And he is, Gandhiji is branded or Gandhiji is identified as a, a drone. What is a drone? I, th I think you all know that. Because drone keeps always observing the things. Just like uh, how Gandhiji keeps only just observing and he doesn't, uh, oh, he doesn't uh, open, he, does, he never uses understanding, he could not speak. He could not speak in front of the people, even if there are two or three people in front of him, that is one. So, when Gandhiji had that opportunity to speak something uh, in the vegetarian society, and he tried his best to speak something in front of the people, but he failed. Okay, let us see that why he was failed and how he was failed and what were the attempts he made to break the silence actually in the vegetarian society now. Well. Uh, there was a problem actually in the vegetarian society with uh, Dr. Allinson, understand that. What was the problem, you know? Because as I told you now, just, uh, Mr. Hill was the proprietor of this ironworks 
and uh, he was also the president of this vegetarian society and he has been financing this vegetarian society for several years you know so everybody supports him blindly understand everybody supports him like anything that well i told you that uh, dr allenson was the supporter of this new birth control movement in london so he was uh, uh, enlightening the people especially among the working class you know that so he was trying to enlighten the people uh, to control their birth rate and uh, so he uh, mr hills uh, felt that it was anti puritan because i told you that mr hills was a, a puritan and who follow the bible uh, here and puritans are none other than the people who act according to the bible according to the old testament especially you know that so since uh, he believes to be a puritan he doesn't uh, welcome the activities of dr allinson here so when he was doing like that and he felt that it would be against to the vegetarian society because vegetarian society was established not only for the promotion of this vegetarianism but also it stands for even the morals also so mr hills felt that uh, it would be against to the uh, puritan society and so they then mr hills brought uh, a kind of uh, a resolution to remove from the vegetarian society whom do they want to remove they wanted to remove dr allinson from the vegetarian society here so that was the resolution and uh, in the text it is used by gandhi ji and a motion was introduced the motion means none, nothing but uh, it is a resolution so a resolution was brought up to remove dr allinson from the vegetarian society so when this came up for discussion among all the members and i told you that gandhi ji was also a member and uh, so gandhi ji was a, a very diplomatic because he could uh, support both of them and he could neither support both of them that is the biggest problem with him because since he was silent and he also felt to be uh, very ashamed of being uh, a silent voter also in the uh, in the meetings so then when this problem came up so he was very sure he was very sure with one fact you know that because there was nothing to do with the vegetarian society uh, uh, whether it is a doctor whether it is an advocate whether it is uh, an activist because it is no way concerned with the vegetarian society vegetarian society is purely meant for the promotion of the vegetarianism and anybody could be a member of this vegetarian society irrespective of his caste irrespective of his ideas irrespective of the morals you know so that is one thing what he wanted to argue in the meeting but he made up his mind very confidently to go on talk uh, to the people uh, and support dr allinson here and of course both of them were very good friends there is no doubt but when he went to the meeting and he, he was feeling very nervous to open that conversation in the meeting by the time the motion was passed and the resolution was passed and dr allinson was removed from the vegetarian society and uh, the, not only this particular incident here that whenever he made up his mind to speak something at the end of the topic you know and uh, the moment gandhi ji uh, stood for speaking you know the next uh, fresh topic would start here so that's why he failed number of times here to speak something in the public here so the first incident is when he was about to support dr allinson from the removal of vegetarian society and he was strong enough to support dr allinson that because there was a contradiction between the religion and the morals or the religion uh, religion and the dietetics here because after all the vegetarian society is meant not for the religion and not for the promotion of any religious aspect here but only for the promotion of vegetarianism in the society so he felt very he felt it it was right that dr allinson was no way concerned with the religious aspect because he was promoting that uh, new birth control movement among the working class especially that is uh, the, the different story but what happened at the uh, at the end of this incident you know after dr allinson was removed from the vegetarian society and gandhi ji felt very sorry for that and he resigned to that immediately so that is first instant where gandhi ji failed to speak well uh, since then what happened you know that uh, gandhi ji felt very sorry for that that he could not speak 
to save his friend from uh, remo uh, removal of this vegetarian society and uh, from uh, from that time onwards you know that he never paid even uh, casual visits also to his friends uh, well if you see the second instance that where gandhi ji failed to speak you know one day what happened you know that uh, mahatma gandhi happened to travel along with uh, sergeant majundar to a place called ventnor and where uh, they uh, spent uh, a couple of days with the vegetarian family uh, that man is none other than mr howald so this gentleman i told you now in the introduction that this man is the author of the ethics of diet so when they spent a couple of days with this gentleman and he invited gandhi ji and sergeant majundar to speak uh, in a meeting uh, for the promotion of the vegetarianism then gandhi ji could not say no then okay he said yes okay when uh, when when his time came up actually so he made up his mind this time uh, at least to read out something you know because uh, gandhi ji was not an extempore i told you that and because he thought of writing he thought of representing something actually here well so what happened you know that uh, so he thought of uh, writing something on the paper and read actually uh, in a meeting here because he knows very well that sergeant majundar is a very good speaker and mr howell is a writer and of course he is also a very good speaker then when he, when his time came up you know to speak something and he could not speak because uh, suddenly his eyes his eyesight was blurred and uh, so he could not speak then he handed over that paper to his friend sergeant majundar and of course sergeant majundar does not need any paper to speak he is such a good speaker and so he speaks so eloquently and finally the me meeting uh, came to an end so that is the second instance where gandhi ji failed to speak um, in front of the people to break the silence well uh, let us see the third attempt gandhi ji made actually to speak in, in the public now well before he departed from london you know he ar he organized a dinner party and for all his vegetarian friends in a hotel called halbon restaurant so where only vegetarian is provided so then you know one thing that uh, for us uh, all the dinners all the dinners are meant only for enjoyment understand but in the western culture it is developed into a kind of an art where all of them share their ideas among themselves while eating and drinking blah 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 so so all the people have made their wonderful speeches you know all his friends made a wonderful speeches and when his time came actually you know that so he, this time he made up his mind strong and of you know to speak something because this is the last moment for him to speak in front of his uh, friends in london so when his time came you know that so he just thought of using some anecdotes what is an anecdote you know that so anecdote is some kind of a story understand that a uh, real story uh, which makes you very impressive to listen to his speech so and many politicians also use that uh, these kind of anecdotes you know and uh, many writers also use and so he thought of using that uh, because he came across uh, some gentleman in london and who uses the word like uh, i conceive and i conceive and i conceive he uses the word three times in uh, in a house of commons in england when he used the word uh, i conceive three times and all the people laughed at him that this gentleman conceived thrice you know but uh, he has given nothing actually out so that was some kind of uh, fun or mock actually that he created actually in house of commons in england similarly gandhi ji was also thinking the same kind of uh, entertainment actually to all his friends where he arranged dinner and he thought of using that so the moment he stood up to speak you know that suddenly he was feeling nervous so he could not get he could not get even a single word and so then he failed again that uh, finally he just simply thanked all his friends uh, uh, for joining the dinner for accepting his invitation to uh, dinner and he simply left england so, so this is the third time where gandhi ji failed to speak in public because i told you now the first attempt where he failed to save his friend dr allenson the second time in the promotion of vegetarianism and the third time at the dinner with his friends so three times he failed but now we are going to the third part of the text where he explains the significance of this shyness here 
So, though it was a kind of, uh, you know, though it was a very unpleasant for him in the beginning days, you know, he felt that it was uh, very helpful for him in the later days. You know why? Because this constitutional shyness has given him a good strength here to become a complete man because he never used, he never slipped his tongue, he never slipped his writings also. So, always, he always keeps in mind thinking, you know, that before he speaks something. That is why we have proverb called, you know, that twice think before you speak. Twice think before you speak. So, so that is why he says that this shyness has helped him to use even the economy of words also. Because he never used uh, maximum words unnecessarily understand that. So, that is one uh, aspect uh, how Gandhiji has taken this particular shyness as his uh, uh, shield understand that. What is the shield, you know? Shield is nothing but protecting. Because he feels that he was highly protected by the shyness only. So, Gandhiji says that this constitutional shyness has uh, no way disadvantage actually for him. What we understand now that uh, Gandhiji never overcame this shyness when he was in London, but when he went to South Africa and he got overcome actually this particular shyness. So, he also feels that uh, experiencing this shyness is nothing but uh, a kind of helping him actually for his future. That is how he realized you know that uh, and he feels that uh, um, silence is part of his spiritual discipline understand that. Generally, there is a weakness for uh, every man that we call it as a natural weakness of man, you know that. What is that natural weakness? And Gandhi uses two important words here. One is proneness to exaggeration, that is one thing. And the second thing is suppress or modify the truth here. So, these two are the most important aspects that we need to learn from this text, you know that. Because most of us, we have, we all have this uh, natural weakness. Uh, how Gandhiji was trying to explain us, you know, because, you know, everybody uh, tries to, everybody tries to exaggerate something that, uh, so because you know only a uh, little thing, but you feel that you know everything, understand that. But we never accepted the fact that I know only little thing, I know only this much, I know only that much, understand, because that is the natural weakness of the human beings. The second thing is suppressing or modifying the truth here. Suppose if you are given some information by your friend, when you carry it to the other person, we don't carry the same, we don't carry the actual words of what the person said, we try to add something, we try to modify it, we try to suppress the fact, understand that. So, this is happening when you speak continuously, understand that. But uh, just like if you see Gandhiji's experience here, that because he never opens up and he keeps thinking continuously. So, he never uses it and he never uses in public also. So, there is no chance for Gandhiji to speak in front of the public with these two qualities. He never exaggerated the things and he never suppressed the fact and he never modified the truth also. So, that is one good lesson that we are all supposed to learn here. And there is also one beautiful saying in English, you know, that uh, uh, speech is silver and uh, uh, silence is gold, understand that. And so, that probably Gandhiji must have, uh, would have preferred uh, silence uh, instead of speaking unnecessarily uh, while wasting of time and wasting of words and amount of time. So, because I told you that uh, it has taught him the economy of words uh, in writing as well as speaking also. So, all this can be said for the benefit of uh, a person, you know, understand that even shyness sometimes, you know, it helped him in that sense. My shyness has been in reality. What is it, you know? It is his shield. And it is his buckler, understand that. He never, because it always uphold him actually uh, to become a complete man in the society. Because it allowed him to grow, that is one thing. And it also helped him in the discovery of the truth. Well, we all know about uh, Gandhiji's life and his uh, uh, story in India that uh, uh, he is known for many uh, moments in India. And uh, when he started, when he came uh, from South Africa and uh, he started uh, uh, a vibrant movement in India with uh, many supporters, you know that. Uh, and uh, the moment we start some listening something about Gandhiji, he is known for non-violence, he is known for Quit India movement, he is known for Salt Satyagraha, he is known for Dandi. Like this, there are many uh, movements which with whom actually uh, we come across, you know. So, that is one thing that we all uh, know very well. But 
the present generation the coming generation they need to know something about gandhi ji so if you want to know something about gandhi ji you know that you one must read his autobiography because his autobiography is not uh, something which is written in a poetic sense or uh, uh, something else like that it's a very simple language understand that uh, he do um, the book is about uh, a very common experiences that how he felt in his life you know and today it is uh, a wonderful book that he has written and that he has composed actually uh, about his own life story well uh, it's time for us to see some uh, vocabulary from the text you know that is language study now and uh, gandhi ji has used it though uh, he wrote his own autobiography in a very simple language you know there are certain words we need to learn from english perspective now one is the first one is tongue tied and he says in the beginning of the text you know that that i always felt tongue tied you know that what is tongue tied here that so tongue tied means that is feeling too shy to speak something in the public understand that that is tongue tied so usually uh, we used to say that because tongue is very important to speak so when it is tied you can speak nothing so it is a beautiful uh, phrase in english tongue tied is that uh, feeling too shy to speak in the public the second one is drone what is the drone because old field uh, makes comment here that uh, and he uh, comments him that you are a drone understand that what is a drone because you know very well uh, in today's technology how drones are working and uh, because even though he is a taru idler understand that because the next word is taru idler because idler means we all know very well that who are very lazy and this man he is a taru idler because drone keeps whistling keeps watching understand that keeps observing the things it keeps capturing the, um, the people understand that so we feel that uh, it is doing nothing but it is doing lot of hard work just like how gandhi ji was struggling a lot in himself you know because when he is alone when he is alone with one or two friends you know he speaks a lot but when half a dozen people gather around him and he could not speak that is one thing and the third one the next word is mustard up what is mustard up because i told you in the beginning gandhi ji tried his best to speak something because he gathered a lot understand mustard means gathering so mustard means gathering that positive quality uh, to get something understand what is that the strength or the energy why to speak understand so he was trying to collect all the courage actually to speak something in the public by the time he got prepared to speak something a new subject would start there so that's why it was really helpless for him even though he gathered that courage actually to speak something the next word is covert is you know what is covert is in fact it is a covert and the covert is none other than a person who doesn't have bravery understand that so it's a lack of bravery so after he was selected as the member of this executive society you know the vegetarian society and he felt that it would be cowardice to register a silent vote in its meetings understand so that's why he wanted to break the silence in the meetings but unfortunately he could not be so the next word is uh, uh, paid a social call and you know actually the word paid payment it is related to the payment but uh, if you see the other part of the word you know that is social call what is this social call here so that means he makes a casual visits to his friends relatives and uh, some other things so after he was failed first time to save his friend dr allenson from the removal of this vegetarian society and he just resigned to or the membership of this vegetarian society and he never paid even social calls also social calls means visiting the people very casually or friends and relatives kitan kende so he could not do so because of such failure uh, in the first attempt there are two important words which are uh, 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 associated with this text now that is first one is extempore and the other one is impromptu so what is extempore and what is impromptu this extempore is used by gandhi ji when he was in ventnor actually because when he was asked to speak something for the promotion of this vegetarianism and he started writing all the notes understand that whatever he wanted to speak and so that means he was taking some notes understand that so that was called extempore and uh, speaking without any preparation understand that because he was not preparing well to speak something because he was feeling very nervous to speak so what was thought 
he thought of simply writing on the paper and he uses the word uh, full scape paper understand that and he wrote a full scape paper there were a lot of ideas for him to speak you know so that is extempore that means uh, 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 speaking something without any preparation that means just like reading understand that is extempore then what is impromptu impromptu is nothing but uh, time is given to say something without any preparation now okay so you are given a time and speak something so that is called impromptu so these two are extremely a good qualities for today's generation in that when you go to interviews when you go to group discussions when you go to any part like this you know when you want to be tested your communication skills or soft skills or presentation skills or public speaking skills you know so this extempore and impromptu are very important aspects that one should learn and uh, okay the, the next word is uh, a sheet of full scape you know that oh, where does it come from and it comes from the text where gandhi ji was failed the second time to speak actually there because the second time when uh, he was about to deliver some speech you know he could not do so so he started taking down the notes so how much he prepared he wrote a complete sheet of uh, uh, full scape understand i think you know very well full scape means uh, the two papers combination and in those days we used to call as a tau paper understand that that is one so what is this incapacity so incapacity is nothing but either mentally or physically so that shows the inability to do something understand that so here mentally gandhi ji was uh, unable to speak something actually in front of the public the next word is anecdote what is this anecdote i told you in the in the text you know that because anecdote is used by many writers used by many speakers especially to impress the public to impress the gathering there so it is a short uh, and amusing short story uh, amusing story about uh, the real incident that takes place in one's life you know that so which makes people thrilled at the end of the text there is one beautiful word discernment of the truth understand what is this discernment of the truth because so he is able to judge because he became a complete man now how he became a complete man this shyness helped him the usage of the economy of words also and it helped him and in judging the people also it helped him judging the situations also so that's why he says that discernment discernment is ability to judge something well uh, this is about uh, the language study that we discussed just now and uh, uh, let me discuss with you some probable questions from this text now but there may be some short questions for you or just like a comprehensive question that who was mr hill and who was mr oldfield and who was dr allinson understand and uh, how gandhi ji uh, spent his life in london understand that so these are the simple questions that you need to keep in mind uh, that when this where, where was exactly gandhi ji by the time and when it was written okay that is also another incident and uh, why did mr hill decided to remove dr allinson from the vegetarian society that is also one question uh, which will be asked in the examination well uh, this is about uh, shyness my shield uh, how gandhi ji has expressed his views about shyness how he felt uh, uh, suffocated speaking in front of the people that he made the three attempts and finally he was successful in overcoming this shyness in south africa that one must wait for the opportunity because gandhi ji never felt disappointed that he failed uh, uh, to do so in his three attempts understand that so finally he concludes that his shyness is his shield and his shyness is his own buckler and of course this really helped him to grow from the text there are many things come actually into the minds of the people that uh, what are the public speaking skills what are the communication skills what are the soft skills because gandhi ji never spoke about all these things in the text have you ever spoken in the public uh, did you ever feel shyness to speak to your parents or to speak to your friends or to speak to your colleagues or teachers you know and how many attempts you made to speak in public have you ever tried to speak in public well start today speaking something uh, to your friends or to your parents you know to your uh, family members because the way uh, gandhi thinks is not the same what you and i think understand that because he felt that he had used that shyness as his weapon and that would shape in that would have shaped him his life uh, more beautifully understand that 
but uh, you and i should think about all these things you know that uh, then what are the strategies to overcome the shyness yes we have to overcome the shyness because in this present world public speaking skills communication skills and uh, soft skills so all are very important for our survival now when you go to an interview what happens you know that what they test they test your communication skills they test your public speaking skills uh, they test your personality understand that the way how you break the silence the way how you lead the people so why group why group discussion is conducted because so they want someone who could lead the people they want someone who could solve the problems understand that you know what happens actually in uh, college level many students cannot speak why everybody comes up with only one or two complaints you know that they are feeling very nervous they are feeling shy these are the only two facts always uh, that uh, we come across with many students uh, in the classroom so how then what are the strategies that you uh, plan for overcoming this um, nervousness or shyness in your life because so you have to wake up so you have to wake up from it otherwise uh, in this rat race world you know that you cannot win so you have to run along with other people also and this is a very interesting thing that one should learn from this text you know that uh, unlike gandhi ji that how he felt you know that because he felt very disappointed several times and he gets uh, sometimes you know ashamed of himself being silent actually in the meetings so not like that you know so now there are many opportunities for you all that where you can break the silence well uh, thank you all for watching this video and we will come up with more videos uh, for even the other semesters also in future thank you one and all